Okay, um, again, long time between drinks. Haven't got a lot done with the car of late. Um, heading to the panel headers tomorrow, it's about 100k away from here. Uh, and we're going to take the windscreen. Woohoo! So, um, that's how close the things in, in um, coming out of paint. So um, I've decided to let the panel beater do the windscreen and the gutter trim. It's a bit of a two-man job, um, a bit of expertise, and I thought, you know what, I'll just pay him to do that one. Um, just a couple of bits, power steering pump, um, the wiper motor. Now, I know they're not supposed to be black, but acid had spilt under the bond in this car and it's way past so a battery boiled some some point before i owned it actually uh anyway it obviously had got up and it caused corrosion so the only way really to deal with this was to blast it and just make it black it's not a show car i keep saying so just a couple more bits um the gearbox has come up good the engine was still waiting so probably in the next two weeks i'll purchase the um Fuel injection, I'm not sure which way I'm going to go yet still, um, but we'll do that. So in the meantime, probably a good opportunity to start looking at some plastics. And uh, these are the, obviously the rear indicators, and these are a bit of a problem with XCs. If you've got an XAB, I think you've got a lot better shot with um, these plastic trims. Actually, there's one little thing I did did do um, with the fuel tank this is an XB fuel tank and it didn't have the fill event so down here so um, there's an XC because remember I had LPG in this car so it didn't have a fuel tank so I've had to recover a fuel tank um, and the XC has this little um, vent obviously stops some um, lugging would be the correct term um, when you're filling your tank up so you don't get a backfill. So um, it didn't have one, so I've installed a um, just an AN sort of fitting into the tank and it's just got an O-ring in it to um, stop it um, uh, venting or leaking. So it's just, a, it's just a tube that goes over. There's nothing really serious about that. It's just one of the little things I did. Um, yeah. No, that's about it. So... Oh, these. I've got to repair these as well, so plastics, um, concentrate blue. So as you can see, uh, these are pretty Barry crocking. Look, they, they don't look too bad at the back, but the chrome's not real good, and I don't think you can get these redone. Um, it is what it is. Potentially, um, there is an XC um, with good tail lights that we might be looking at and we'll find out about tomorrow, hopefully. Um, and if I can get them, I'll grab that and also the GXL badge for the boot. Because the panel beater, uh, when he swapped it over, I replaced the boot on the XC years ago. And the panel beater, my famous panel beater, um, just ripped it off. Instead of getting in and undoing the nuts and, and removing it carefully, you destroy it. So what I'm gonna do with these, first of all is clean them up. And um, I got this product again, we use it extensively in, in general aviation as a bit of a cure-all for internal bits. And uh, it's very, very strong, metal set A4. Um, there's a few distributors around the country, I got this out of Adelaide actually. Um, is a great two-part epoxy. It's very, very tough, sandable, and all the rest of it. it. It's extremely tough. It's it's better than the stuff you're going to get from any auto shop. Auto shop. Trust me, this is a proper industrial um, two-part epoxy. It, it, it can get it in big, big drums as well. So it's got fairly sizable tubes. I can't remember what it costs. It's not overly cheap. Go figure that. But it works extremely well. Um, and if you've got to do a pretty big fill trying to get this stuff out, it's just a two-part, um, then uh, someone's trying to ring, I'll answer that in a minute, um, then this is a good product to use. So metal set A4, so what I'm going to do, 
put them into the bath, clean them all up, and just tape and build these areas back up. I'm pretty sure I've got new seals for the, um, for the indicators. Um, I've pulled these ones apart once before, um, so that's why they're not so dirty and they're pretty clean. I've cleaned them up inside once before. Um, the other thing is these studs they put in, um, they're a bit of a nightmare as well. Um, you know, they, they just put too much stress. They weren't a good design. Like a lot of things in these old cars, the plastics were just, well, it was the first infancy of making a lot of plastics in cars, I suppose, the XC. And um, they weren't real good at it, let's be honest. So anyway, get them all apart, get them cleaned up, and uh, we'll start doing some, some repairs. You can see there's a lot of them. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. But trying to get a new set of these uh, is proving to be quite difficult. Um, XC trim parts are not produced by rare spares at this point. There's a few bits and bobs, a few badges and stuff, but you know, if it went on to a cobra, you can probably get a hold of it, but um, just for the normal car, there's not a lot out there. So uh, my advice, if you're playing with an XC, be really careful with your plastics. Yeah, and and um, be careful what you throw it. You never know what you'll need. Anyway, on on. Exciting news. Thanks to Peter Anderson. Now, Peter Anderson's a guy who's been doing a rebuild of a Fairmont GXL in a sh down somewhere in Victoria. Uh, he's got a very popular YouTube channel and I watch him quite often. And he's put one up recently um, where he's put the power windows into the car and they didn't function, AKA just like mine, uh, particularly the left hand front. And I've known, I've, I've been mucking around with this for 30 odd years, uh, I've known that the switches just don't carry enough load. Um, the motors on the power windows for the old XABC Falcons are really heavy. Um, <clears throat> and I'd go and put a, even a five amp battery hardwired directly to the loom left hand, left hand side, for example, the one that always gives me the, the, the trouble, and um, it would work just fine. Put it through the loom, it wouldn't work. I've pulled the loom out, um, the loom and, and the, the switches and, and the whole system actually come off another car, an old ZH Fairlane, and you know I got the sw spare switch block because I changed switch blocks. Um, I put a relay in the bloody thing um, to put more voltage down into the uh, left-hand side of the car. Um, tried to improve the earth, all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, these switches just don't carry enough load. And now I've never thought that they're able to come apart. And because if you have a look real careful there, you can see it's just seamed. And I've had a go before and I didn't manage to get it. And old Pete, um, and I've even tried drilling a hole just through the plastic to inject um, some of that magic spray that I like to use, the um, Keg Deoxid. In fact, I'll grab that because I think I've shown this before. I'm not sure. Well, there, this stuff here. Not cheap. Again, it's a product I first used in aviation moons and moons ago. Um, I think it's about 60 bucks, can't remember. I might have got a bit cheaper on eBay, I'm not sure, but this is a great thing. Uh, for example, the dash lights on my XC are as bright as a new car, and all I did was spray the rear stat with this stuff, and um, uh, it just works to this day. I did that years ago. So I've tried to inject this years ago into here to try and you know, get a better contact, but obviously when they made these things, so Peter Anderson, you bloody legend, he worked out a way how to pull these things apart. So I went in from the inside here, so I tried to, to get it from the outside, but you can see there's little clips. There is a little clip there. So you just get the screwdriver and you can see where that, that inserts. So you can get these things apart and therefore you can clean them out. Now, these need to be opposite side. So that when the, the rocker sits on them, Right, as it rock, because it can only rock one way. Uh, sorry, you know, one, one, if you know what I mean. Sorry, b bad explanation. But the point of it is, one way, it needs to make a contact, and the other way, it needs to make one contact. So it's always making one, but never two, obviously. Duh, makes sense. 
Um, so these things are just rotten. And you're never going to get a high flow of electricity through that. Simple as that. Look, look down there. Filthy. So, um, look, I might just use Terps. I don't think I've got any um, contact cleaner in stock. Um, but obviously a solvent. And I'm going to do them one at a time. And the reason for that is, is so I don't muck them up. Because obviously you don't want to get them back to front. So give these things a good clean up. And 30 years of frustration. Thank you, Peter Anderson, you bloody legend. Um, I just, I've had a go at this and, um, you know, maybe we'll call it an unprecedented fail, because that's what the media does these days, doesn't it? Uh, um, and I just thought that these things do not come apart, because they just don't look like they do. As you can see, they're really well seamed in. But, in fact, he had a crack. Good on him. And they do. So if you've got the same problem, I'll bet you do. If you've got power windows and an old Ford um, at XC, you can pull this apart and obviously clean it up. Now, I haven't seen his next video, whether it, it all came good or not, but um, I, I'm guessing that that's going to be right. I've always suspected this switch, but just didn't know you could repair it. And trying to get a new one, well, good luck. Now, gluing. It's coming along fine. I know it looks rubbish, but... Um, the, the resin has done its job and that's actually quite smooth that's, the tape comes off this stuff really well so I'll put the second layer in now do more repairs but these things are going to rescue up just fine to be honest with you um, you know that's all come up good that'll look fine paint it black again whatever you can't see them at the end of the day you can't see these so as long as they're functional in one piece um, well then that's what we really need here um, and what I'm going to do, where I've glued over or resined over the, um, the holes for where the studs go in, I'll just drill them back in and fresh resin these back in and give them a clean up before we put them back in. The ones that are in, I'm not going to try and belt out for risk of just creating more damage, but I'll put some uh, ACF 50 on, ACF 50, put on a case again. So these are the housings and obviously they're aluminium and then you can see it's corroded. Now. ACF 50 is available probably most motorbike shops. The motorcycle industry seems to have taken a bit of an adaption to this product because it's um, a lot of aluminium on motorbikes. Uh, and so you can get this from a motorbike shop. Um, you can get it from Spruce Aviation. Avial don't do. Yeah, don't worry about Avial, but um, they're too big for privateers to buy from anymore. But this product here... Um, just literally spray it on, I'll do a bit later, but wherever you spray the stuff on, it will stop the corrosion in its tracks. It's not a repair, obviously, but again, you can't see this on the car because it's all hidden away. But you do need to stop that corrosion, so you can see down here, uh, and this stuff tops, stops the you know, anode cathode process. Pretty much it'll last forever once you put it on. It doesn't say that in the can, it says two years, but it will. So just... Um, if you've got these, it looks like they're of some sort of alloy. I thought they might have been stainless, but they're not. I thought, or maybe even plastic, they're not. looks like they're some sort of alley. Um, and alley corrodes in a funny way, uh, like that, for example. So um, I'm just going to treat it, give them all a bit of a clean-up, and um, treat it with that stuff. There's another product out there, but I've not seen in a motorbike shop before it or any automotive shop. Uh, but you can get this on eBay. The other one's called Corrosion X. Uh, again, that's just aviation. We use this stuff all the time. Um, you can put this, you can spray circuit, break, circuit boards with this. Very good stuff. Um, so I'm going to use it for that application on the car. One last little tip, playing with the uh, metal set. Um, well, you thought, you know, something like that would be shattered and you wouldn't be able to repair it. Well, this stuff will do it. Um, Go to, go to one of your auto shops and get these, you know, the old bog scrapers. And then just a razor blade cleans it off. Perfect. No problems. So it's just a little tip. So I'm going to do the second application of the resin now, or the epoxy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then get into the exciting stuff of fixing a very ancient problem that I've had. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Okay, so um, just 
just done the first uh, clean up and I've popped another one just very carefully um, just to show you the difference of what we're dealing with here so you can see these cleaned up beautifully um, and like I said I've just used a bit of metho and compressed air clean it out um, you can see how that is nice and clean and another another thing is just to make sure my orientations are right because obviously these are the two rear windows and um, I'll make sure that one marries up to that one so I was able to get that out without it springing into bits which is nice so this one goes back together like that now cut the contact points so believe it or not that blade there is a contact point so you need to clean that up of your scotch bright um, and obviously then your main contact point is here bollocks fit uh, onto those two little pads and then that flat onto the smaller ones unless I've buggered it up which I may have so you can see how clean they came up so this is one we haven't cleaned so let's get that out and yep so you can see how filthy that is and and down down there is worse and that's why there's just no contact um, you're just not going to carry any current through that it's like if your car sometimes is slow to start and you see a dirty terminal or well, imagine that trying to run the motors so the small bit clearly um, the small little flat pad goes onto the big pads at the bottom um, sorry doesn't matter which way it is the big flat was onto the longer ones and the rocker piece whatever you want to call it the the bent piece goes on to the smaller ones and they are back to front it's not in back to front they're mirror reverse when you look at them and now that's interesting this one here's got two of these big pads yeah anyway doesn't really matter we know which way they go but you can just see how filthy it is geez I wish I had known this years ago so I'm pretty confident now so I've pulled the loom apart and completely stripped it I found a couple of brakes in it years ago and repaired it and you know I've had sort of gains with it but at the end of the day you're never going to get through this so there we go all good um, any song would do I reckon okay just throw a bit of a spanner in the works the master switch which um, gives passengers control of their windows is completely different to the toggles inside so it's, it's actually a, a pair of contact points and what it is is this is spring loaded oh, I'm trying to do two things at once here spring loaded to contact uh, and when it comes apart uh, it all sort of goes untidy but at the end of the day I worked out that that little lug sits into a little groove there it's in position and then you have an opposite lug or shoulder slot call it what you will here and that sits onto that so um, the points, there's a, there was a little bit of burn, but you can't really get in there to clean them. Um, I probably could just um, get a punch, put it on, and give it a really, really light tap um, just to firm it up. <clears throat> Do it on the uh, anvil there. Just, and I mean just to firm it, and that's all just to help those rivets maintain good contact so obviously the studs are just a rivet and they're pressed in and that's it folks that's that's all she is so just beware um, I'm pulling that apart now now that I've done it I went in through the side same as these ones don't recommend you go in through <coughs> the end if you've got one of these master blocks and you're pulled apart clean it like I am uh, on the switch, which can, like I said, it's the one that locks out the passengers. 
go in from the sides. Don't um, go in from there. Right, well these lot are overexcited, and not because the car's here, it's because it's playtime. Just sit down for a minute, you lot. She's back. Now that's something to be excited about. And it looks awesome. The boys have done a magnificent job. And they're not done. Um, uh, Shawnee wants the car back once we get the upholstery done. And then it'll have one more um, blast. But you can just see it's just magnificent. So he's going to give it another buff, I beg your pardon. And any, any blemishing removal he needs to do. Um, first things first, I was going to put the uh, tank in, but when the when it sits, when we have it down and latched, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Those gas struts got some warmth in them, and a nice soft rag that's clean. My jumper will do fine. Oh. Okay, latches in nice. You probably can't even pick it up, to be honest with you. It's that good. However, there is a slight rise here. Now, I've put the gas struts in this car, got rid of the springs. Um, so we're going to remove the hard. We've got a mate coming over, give me a hand with this one, because I don't want to upset the alignment the boys have done, because they've got it pretty much right. So I don't want to upset that, but the hinge pin on both sides is pretty flogged. So... Uh, and having the gas struts in is exacerbating that. So just to get that alignment just nice, um, I'll put a couple of high tensile um, shanked bolts to replace that. Um, but as you can see, everything else is just Mickey Mouse. The chromes, look, I'm gonna have to finesse these in things in a little bit. I've got Shawnee to do these because I didn't want to go there. Um, these weren't perfect when I took them off. Um, they're a bit of a nightmare, but it'll clean up fine. Um, it'll just be a matter of masking off and then uh, metal polishing. And then I'm going to do a little brass drift and a little hammer, and I'll go along and straighten them up. Uh, these are expensive, these things, and trying to get them new. Really happy with the way the windscreen um, frame has come up. It, it, that looks just sensational. Um, I never had it fitting that good. Uh, and the bonnet, as you can see... It just looks freaking awesome. Really happy with it. I don't know if you can see down the side of the car there, but just over the moon. Uh, I remember saying at the beginning of this, how long is a piece of string when you start one of these projects? Well, this piece of string got really long and um, <laughs> uh, way more than I guess we intended to do. But if you're going to do it, you know, do it once, do it right. Okay, that latch doesn't work anymore, so I'm going to have to manually do the bonnet. So, wasting no time. Um, first things first. We'll just go up. It's not all time. You hot. Seriously. I've already ripped out the steering so Sean didn't reconnect it because he didn't want to damage his beautiful paint job which you can see probably need more light for this filming but um anyway so i've just got the tie rod right ends there there's the rest of the steering arm um which we're getting rid of ah, i might have to spray that missed that bit no big deal um so he went for orange in the engine bay, and then that's what I'd done before the car went away. Um, and 
he's gone for a black shelf, which I think was a good idea. Um, inside of the bonnet, uh, it just looks fantastic. I didn't realise that the boys were even going to do that, so I'm just over the moon with the quality of this job. It is just sensational. Um, so, time to start getting some bits out. So I won't film all this, but double RS, that's the first thing we're going to play with. I was going to get it all out tonight and put it in position and um, bolt it up the car tomorrow and lower the car and pull the um, steering column out and see if we can't um, set all that up so we can steer it because that's a problem. So I need to do that. Um, then we'll fix up the boot, then we'll put the tank in to get it off the floor uh, and then I'll just start building it up bit by bit. Uh, until we get to the point where we'll put the engine in. I'll probably do the brakes, put the new brake lines in. I've got braided brake lines to go into the car. <sighs> there they are there. So it's just an absolute mountain of work. Um, and it's just a matter of trying to get it in a, syst in a systematic approach where we uh, um, don't go backwards, you know, two step forward, one step back scenario. Um... Nothing else really to mention at the moment except I'm bloody over the moon, just fantastic. And um, we'll, we'll just get on on, except that we have made a decision, um, reference the wheels, and we're going to stay with 12 slots, but we'll get a new set obviously. Um, and we'll go for 15 by 8s all the way around. Uh, my wife doesn't like the look of the uh, torque thrusters, American Racings. Um, so we're going to stick with tried and true 12 slot. You can get them. Uh, out of America now, and we'll just get shallower dish. These ones are just too deep dish, so the offset's wrong, and that's why this tyre was scrubbing on the guard here, so we don't want a repeat of that scenario. So anyway, that's where we're at.